that we heard last night. I'm going to just turn down that music. Cool. Thanks for joining us. Um, just a few uh, uh, kind of bits that I just want to share. You know, we do a, quite a few of these webinars and workshops and all sorts of educational programs that we do. We try to share as much knowledge as we can with the, um, the wider public and also our clients as well. Um, if you're interested, we're going to host another webinar called the How to Become an SMSF Millionaire, Self-Managed Superfund Millionaire. Um, there's a QR code there. There's a little link if you want to join and register. That's on the 23rd of June. If you're interested on that, feel free to join us. If if you want to know more, more upcoming events, follow us on all the social pipes. We'll share that towards the end. Um, but yeah, um, for those of you who've never joined us before, uh, we're from Inspire. So that's a, a, a little picture of uh, our team there. Uh, and Ben, our founder, um, started it, I think, back in, was it 14, Ben? Or was it 13? I think it was 2013. 2013. So, well, that's it. Yeah, a while back, a while back. <laughs> and since then, we've been uh, uh, been grateful enough to be recognized in some uh, uh, really great uh, um, uh, industry awards. We made some uh, uh, finalist categories last year. It was a big year for Inspire. Uh, but what we're, what we're famous for is also uh, to help our clients save some tax. Um, now, we're, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, and we're in the thick of tax planning right now. Between April to June is when we really start cranking up those numbers. And we kind of we saved up to $23 million in tax and count. So that's a little bit about us, a bit exciting. Now, if you want to get to us and get to know more about us or uh, even just want to chat about uh, accounting and tax stuff, uh, you can always uh, book in a chat with us. There's a link there. We're going to post the link in the chat as well for you guys. There's a QR code. We're trying to make it super easy for you guys to get in touch with us because that's what we're all about. So if you want to book a call, feel free to do that. We can get in touch. Okay. And especially if you have some questions about today and how that applies to you, feel free to get in touch as well. Cool. Uh, also, something to share, Ben recently at launched his book, The Wealth for Life book, a long time in the making, and I think that's a little cartoon representation of his family there on the front cover. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but did you want to talk a little bit about your book? Yeah, so um, so I published that back in September last year, um, and the, the short of it is, um, you know, a lot of a lot of our clients sort of focus on their businesses and and um and in terms of how we help yes we absolutely do the the business side of, of tax and accounting but um this is a, a conversation for business owners around their personal finances so i'm mm -hmm. um, just extending that further making sure people have their eye on on growing their own family's wealth uh, and the i guess uh, i've detailed out nine steps i recommend taking uh, as a business owner to um to build that wealth over your lifetime exciting and ben's been kind enough to share that book as well if you want if you want to uh uh get a copy of that there's a link as well again you know qr codes whichever suits you grab that book and um yeah with that in mind ben it's nice mm. to uh see you again and uh, for those of you who've never met ben he's uh, he's the founder of inspire he's, uh the started inspire when he was 23 fresh out of one of the big fours and started his own way and uh, he's an award-winning chartered accountant and uh he's the best mate of mine as well uh he's an author heaps of experience but uh what i'm really excited to say is that he's a family man first and foremost so mm -hmm. that's his little family out of him and that's poppy how old is she now ben she's about seven and a half months old so oh she's my a, goodness i know you only yeah. see two kids in each photo here that actually has three kids <laughs> <laughs> she'll say that they are all the same wife by the way <laughs> 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 that's a good that's a that's a good observation that's a good yeah. observation that's uh, also a testament to a strong family man right <laughs> and um yeah so my name's riz i'll introduce myself that's okay um i'm one of the associate partners here in the chartered accountant at inspire i started here in 2016 but prior to that i was working in with very closely with many businesses as an in-house accountant as well um recently i had a newborn uh he's uh i think I think six months now. Jeez, time does go. Uh, so if you have any uh, dad advice, parenting advice, feel free to send me an inbox. Uh, and also, I've just started writing some Peloton. Get on it. If anybody's on there, get, add me at <laughs> Ramzan. I'd love to race you in the, in the mountains of Grand Canyon and stuff. It'd be fun. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, a little bit about me. I've obviously um, been working as an accountant here for a while, and I've, I've been able to help some of our clients save some tax. There's a few of my clients here today. It's nice to see everyone there. Um, but if you want to get in touch with me again, you can book a call. We can have a chat as well. But enough about me, enough about us, enough about Inspire. We're here for the budget, okay? So this is what you guys are for. Um, today, we're just going to cover uh, 
um, kind of the 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 key topics of you know the budget's usually full of stuff you know and there's some stuff that's just not going to be too relevant and that's where we've kind of um, distilled it a little bit more than just a general kind of white paper about the whole budget so we're going to cover on three main topics how does the budget impact small business owners individuals and self-managed super fund members or if you have a self-managed super fund um, uh, you just kind of want to have an understanding on that. It's SMSF and super fun in general, in a way. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into the details of that today. Um, for those of you who just joined us, we had a few more people join in between now at the start of the webinar. If you have any questions, there is a chat box, there is a QA. and a We'll try to answer those questions uh, by the end of the sesh. Okay. All right, let's get into it. For small business owners, the first thing that um, obviously everyone's been thinking of um, and kind of waiting on is the temporary full expensing rules. Just a quick reminder, um, um, the assets that were purchased in, the, uh, uh, in this financial year, this will be the last time where there's no limit in what you can claim as a tax depreciation, notwithstanding cars. Now, there's no that was earmarked to end at 30th of June. And as we know it, it, it's actually going to finish. So there's no extension of that rule itself. Where it does fall back on, um, uh, we have a temporary uh, uh, one-year uh, increase to the uh, instant asset write-off threshold, which is going to be $20,000. So it's going to be for one year, which is next financial year from 1st of July 23 to 24. Um, and that's where any assets purchased below $20,000, you can write that off immediately. Now, if it's above $20,000, we fall back to the old ways, which is you depreciate it at 15% for the first year and then 30% the year after until the value of the asset is below $20,000 and we can write it off straight away. Mm. So this is something that we kind of knew that was coming. Um, and and yeah, we, we've got a little bit of time still between May and June to kind of take advantage of this temporary full expensing rule. Um, but it was introduced at, at the height of COVID. So it was really to help those small businesses save some tax during that time. Now we're on the other side of the hill. It's kind of natural that we see they're kind of dropping this back to the uh, instant asset rise off hmm. threshold. Sorry, Ben, were you going to say something? Yeah, yeah, and um, and like literally before this budget announcement, um, the, the there'd be there was no sort of um, idea of what we could claim for depreciation for assets after one July. That's right. um, but uh, the, the expectation is because even you know from from me starting in accounting back in what two thousand and seven two thousand and six uh, around then um, there was always this some sort of limit of uh, what we could immediately write off uh, and that went from like a thousand bucks to twenty grand to thirty grand to twenty to ten to every, like basically the whole thing in in over the last couple of years um, and, and uh, you know it was a, a fairly reasonable expectation that they wouldn't get rid of it um, mm. they've just dropped it right back to twenty k. Uh, now, I think for most business owners, this isn't really going to um, the, the the asset that this is probably most going to affect is your vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to get a a vehicle under twenty k that's sort of relatively new. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, if, even if you buy a Ute, uh, then um, you know we're going to have to do depreciation the the, the old way uh, yeah. rather than just claiming it in one year. Um, it'll be uh, fifteen percent in the first year for small business owners, and then thirty percent every year after that. So if we just keep that in mind, and vehicles, you do have uh, a depreciation limit. Just keep that in mind um, if it is not a commercial Ute. Um, and there's there's some asterisks there. So yeah, before you buy it, before you assume that you can claim all of it, or mm. uh, assuming that yeah, there's no limit on what you can claim, that's when you got to check with your accountant. Um, hey, I'm, I'm going to buy this vehicle. Just just give me the quick scenario of it. Absolutely. And if you see this and you go, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm at the car shop now, Riz, while I'm watching this webinar and ordering a car right now, um, mm. just be mindful as well that the car needs to be delivered and ready for use mm. before 30th of June. So even if you order it now, it doesn't mean that it's expense in this financial year. It needs to be delivered and ready for you. So if yeah. you know anything about cars and ordering cars right now, you know, a month or two, depending unless they have available stock straight away, you might be able to do that. Cool. So I just started that straight away. That was a big question mark for a lot of our clients, mm -hmm. especially during tax planning. Um, now something to just, uh, I'll also add some reminders throughout this uh, 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 kind of webinar today. 
one of the things that was introduced as well was the loss carry back tax offset. I'm not going to go too much into detail on what it is because it was introduced, last, I think it was last year or the year before. Um, but this is the last year in which if you have a loss in your business, a company, you can actually carry that loss and apply it backwards to any prior years where you've made profit. Um, so uh, there are obviously limitations in how far back you can go. And there's a process to that. Uh, but just be mindful if this year, for whatever reason, your company has gone through a loss, chat to your accountant and make sure that we get that tax offset. Essentially, you get a, a rebate of sorts on your tax bill for this uh, for the prior years. So you get a refund for that. So that's a bit, a bit of a reminder. Um, small business and energy incentive. So this one's new. Um, mm. uh, this is uh, not too dissimilar to the small business uh, skills boost and investment boost that we saw uh, last year introduced by actually the previous government. Um, they've added another one called a small business energy incentive boost. So basically, in a nutshell, it's um, allowing you an extra 20% tax deduction for any expenses that are related to, and they use the word electrification and more efficient use of energy. So they're trying to uh, make sure that any appliances that you have are a bit more efficient. So things like heating, cooling system, and if you're upgrading it to you know more efficient fridges, induction cooktops, installing batteries and heat pumps, anything that makes the use of energy a bit more efficient, you will uh, be eligible for what we call a 20% uh, uh, extra deduction. Now there is a limit, of up to 100,000 of total expenditure. Now, th the the way that this was announced was kind of for, uh, you know, we've got uh, restaurants, hairdressers, or we've got anything that really uses premises or even physios. If you have things that are uh, uh, using electric right now and you can make it a bit more efficient, this is where um, you, you, you'll be able to get an extra $20,000 extra deduction there, um, which is really cool. And uh, now, similar to the car, it needs to be installed and ready for use between 1 July 23, so next financial year, to 2024. So start having a look around. Um, if you do have a busted air conditioner that, that's been um, waiting for a while to be upgraded to something a bit more efficient, um, timing it to next financial year would be a, a good idea as well. Um, now, there's also the other two uh, um, small business boosts, the uh, yeah, skills and I think skills and training boost and also the technology boost. Um, a quick update on that one, that's still uh, before the parliament right now to be legislated, but that was uh, um, introduced in the last budget. So we're still waiting for for, for that to go through uh, and, and receive royal assent as well. And just the expectation on that is that there's nothing indicating that it's the rug's going to be pulled out under that. It uh, of... doesn't look like it. And and yeah. it, it doesn't, and that's the thing, right? Like the budget, sometimes we're just waiting for people to reverse yeah. anything from the, I think people were just a little bit worried about that one because there was a switch of government. Um, hmm. But there was no indication that there was any, you know, we're going to step backwards on that. And so it's, it's still in front of parliament to go through. There's no indication that that's going to be a, well, as you mentioned, a rug pull for that one. Yeah, and, and just on this incentive, we've got a question from Lloyd. So would that include solar panels uh, with battery? Um, yeah, so so that's where that, that in installing batteries come into play um, and, and essentially anything that makes it more energy efficient. So solar panels will be caught under that. Um, the, it, it just depends on on how much that costs us. Obviously, when we start getting to the bigger ticket items, hmm. you want to be careful of that 100 grand as well. Um, now, as... As with all of this, I should have said this at the start, as with all of this, um, usually what happens is we receive uh, a bit of notification of something new they want to introduce. And what happens after that is um, we usually get some guidance from the ATO or even our our uh, tax bodies that we work with on how to implement some of this stuff. So um, as, as we see uh, the announcement come up, people will start working on, you know, how we actually apply some of this stuff. So a really good example of that was the uh, fringe benefit tax exemption for electric cars. Um, we're getting a little bit more guidance, well, a lot more than what we did when when they first announced it now. So uh, uh, if you're not 100% sure, I think it's, it's a matter of talking to your accountants just uh, for now um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, getting more details on your specific situation and when can we get some uh, uh, some clear understanding of, you know, little things like, you know, because this is just an example in a one line item, there's so much more that could be included under this, right? Or excluded in a sense. Cool. Um, so, uh, <laughs> how it. 
<laughs> That's a good little comment. Um, so the, the other thing that was uh, raised as well, uh, we've got a lodgement penalty amnesty as well. So this is a little bit of a, a kind of um, uh, fair game, a handshake they're trying to give to small business owners, where mm -hmm. if there is a, a failure to lodge penalties on your ATO accounts right now, uh, there's am an amnesty period. So any outstanding tax statements that are lodged, uh, are supposed to be lodged from, sorry, that's going to be lodged from June, to this, uh, the end of this uh, calendar year, which is December 2023, that was supposed to be lodged in 2019, December 2019, 29th, February 22, if there's any outstanding, that includes like bases and things like that. Um, if you lodge them and catch them up between in this next kind of six, seven months, and uh, there's an amnesty that you will be able to remit the failure to lodge penalties, which is quite significant. It's in the thousands of dollars if you've got a lot of them uh, back to back as well. Um, so, um, if you have some um, stuff to catch up on, uh, let's start looking at that uh, because if you have those penalties, it can, it can be hefty. Uh, it'd be good to um, uh, get that done up and yeah, you know, stay up to date and also get a remission of those penalties as well. And I think the, the aim of what the government's trying to do there is, um, you know, I don't know how much percent of people haven't lodged those statements, but, uh, but they kind of want to know what's on their, their books from a, a debt perspective. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think the the the, the honest truth is they've done this before as well, you know. And and they're, they're, I'm not saying you rely on it, but um, if there is, it comes up to the surface. Definitely take advantage. You've got years of you know mm -hmm. things happens in life, and we kind of you know get set back for lodgements and stuff like that. But now is a now's a good time to catch up on that stuff. Um, the next one. Uh, Can we run through? Can we run through this one? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, so the, yeah, well, I've heard about this actually before the budget release, but, uh, but there is going to be a move to paying super not in the, 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 basically a month after the quarter that just ended. So right now, um, you know, let's say for the March quarter that finished 31 March, we've got to pay super by the 28th of April. Um, what they're going to move to is payday super. So you basically, you pay your employees and then immediately you also pay the, the superannuation that's due on that pay, um, on that pay run. Um, now uh, that's going to be uh, from one July, 2026. Um, and this is the sort of thing we saw coming when they were, when they announced single touch payroll uh, where them, and, and even that the lodgements due for lodging your pay run information with the government. I'm pretty sure it's within a day or two. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty quick. So, so right now our, our requirement is to pay our employees, report that pay run to ATO and then, um, you know, still pay super in that, quarterly fashion uh, mm. but yeah that's going to be shifting um, but we've still got what three years or so uh, till that uh, comes into play um, we, we've also got clients who do that at the moment anyway um, right. um, so and what I'd sort of encourage is just to sort of get ready to expect that sort of thing um, you know if you're already allocating super to a, a separate account on, on the on the payroll date or in a consistent way it shouldn't matter uh, too much uh, what um when that switch happens so yeah it's just just thing we need to sort of get ready for that yeah and i think it's a bit it's a bit further ahead in time right now and and where i think it impacts a lot of um uh the businesses here is is the ones that have uh cash flow cycles that you need to be mindful of so i.e you do the work first but you get paid later mm -hmm. so if you have long cash flow cycles this is going to be a, a bit of an adjustment a bit of a buffer that you do need to fund because usually what happens is you might be paid within that three months before the, the due date of the next super so you have the cash to pay for the super for your employees so you kind of borrow from them for that three months for a bit but if you have to do this straight away let's say if it's fortnightly then you need a bit of a buffer to make sure you can run your business more efficiently with that cash available so if you have long cash flow cycles definitely something to plan for I would even recommend starting to see whether we can apply this now and just getting used to it there is a, a, a uh, um, you know, uh, it's a bit of a streamlining process of your of your uh, obligations as employees because you know super is paid on time, um, uh, as same as wages. It just keeps all those liabilities off your book for three months. It's just straight away out as well. So there is a, a plus point there as well. 
Cool. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, all good. Um, now, did this one. So this, uh, I think Howard had a question about this one. Um, uh, the- yeah, Howard's question was more around: uh, did, did do electric cars qualify for that energy incentive? Um, my my gut feel is that it, they won't because they've yeah. got their own set of rules around this sort of thing. Yeah, the 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 way that I read that energy incentive is is uh, kind of appliances and almost like fittings and stuff. Um, it, it, this vehicle, the 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 energy efficient vehicles like um, electric cars and things like that, they have their own thing right now, which is the fringe benefit, benefit tax exemption. So, um, this has been announced. This is not something new, but we're just saying that there's no changes um in that budget. Um, uh, it, it just means that they they are they are wanting to push forward with this, and they they, they it's going to be more popular the electric. Cars cars itself now if it, just a quick reminder on that as well is that there's a basic an fpt exemption for any uh, the, the electric cars that you purchase now the electric cars that that, that are available out there there's and I think 20, 21 different types of electric cars and plug-in hybrids and things like that. Um, but the the eligibility is that it needs to be a zero or low emission vehicle. There's a definition for that. So things like um, plug-in hybrids. So it can be hybrid, but it needs to be plug-in. No, uh, we, you know those rev fours that use fuel and, and electric that's not the one you have to plug it in uh obviously electric cars and hydrogen fuel cells as well mm-hmm. and they need to be first held and used on or after first july 22 so in this current financial year we're in and forward um where the first retail sale of the car i.e the the, the first hand price not second hand price that i think the first hand price needs to be below the luxury car tax threshold now uh it, it changes year per year but in 2023 this financial is 84,000, which is quite significant and i think that out of like 21 different electric cars that's available in australia uh, uh, about 14 of them are below that 84 grand so it's it's a it's a healthy threshold to, to be picking um and if you buy a second hand car instead you just need to check, check the first retail sale of the vehicle so it's not your second hand price i've had questions about this as well just want to make sure that it didn't pay any luxury car tax to be eligible now what's the big deal the big deal is you you don't have to pay any fringe benefits tax this is great for employers who want to incentivize their employees to to uh, to salary package or or uh, to retain their stuff through offering a, a novate at least uh, essentially what you're saying is hey um, in your 100 grand salary, you can, if you want to, you can buy a 60 grand card of that. Um, and and what we'll do is we'll novate that, uh, that, that uh, our salary sacrifice that for you. Uh, and essentially you're paying for that car and the, the running cost of that car through pre-tax money, which is significant um, if you have a, a, a high tax uh, um a uh, high income tax rate, um, but also the employers are not up for the fringe benefits tax that you, that's usually taxed at the top marginal tax rate uh, for the benefit that they, they, they give with the value of the car itself. So it's a win-win situation. Um, and also it's great for the environment as well. Um, and electric cars are pretty cool. <laughs> so I think that you're going to see quite an increase in demand for electric cars. Not that it's easy to get right now, but um, if you're thinking of getting one, um, uh, there's definitely look into how you can structure that even if you're a director of that business every having having a look at how 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 you can um, uh, structure that uh, 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 salary sacrifice arrangement with yourself as well so the other requirement is obviously that person needs to be employed by the business you can't do, do it to someone who's not employed by that business but really cool um we've got a bit of time for that one uh i believe that one goes all the way up to 2020 25 or 26 april april 25 or 26 i'll we'll just have to check on that one um but we have a bit of time um uh, so you don't have to go out and buy something right now it's just started uh, but I'll, I'll i can see that that's gonna start increasing in use so we're, we have, we're starting to get more questions about that as well Cool. Um, so from a business owner or small business perspective, that was pretty much the things that we've identified as worth sharing. Um, the next bit here is about the individuals itself. Now, um, this is going to be in relation to, uh, anyone really if you if you have a tax file number and you 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 pay taxes um but the there's some uh, bits about the income tax rates that's going to be really exciting because there's going to be a, a, a cut uh, in in taxes not this year not next year the next financial year um but what we were waiting for there was you know some people were again we change a government people want to know whether that's still going ahead the good news is we didn't hear anything 
sometimes no news is good news. It's going ahead. So there were no changes made to existing personal income tax rates. And then the already legislated stage three tax cuts will continue to apply from 2024. So not next financial year, the financial year after. Um, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, also, there's a tax offsets that uh, we're going to say goodbye to in this financial year. So uh, the low middle income tax offset is no like, uh, longer available. That's not news. We knew that from last budget. In the current year and future income years, we knew that. Uh, the low income tax offset is still available for this financial year only. So uh, what I like about tax offsets is it's not like a, it's more powerful than a deduction because it's actually just a discount on your tax bill. Um, so it, it is uh, going to be missed um, because it, it did save some of our clients at least 700 bucks for those earning less than 66 grand. Um, and also, you know, if you have uh, anyone that's uh, working part-time or anything like that, that's something that's just going to be added to their tax bill uh, from next financial year. Also, under uh, the next uh, stage of tax cuts, uh, anyone earning between, this is the big kind of awaiting uh, tax cut uh, that, that's going to happen. Uh, anyone earning between 45000 and 200000 will pay a marginal tax rate of 30%, effectively yeah. getting rid of that middle tax rate. I've got a table to show you to visualize that a little bit better in a second. Um, that's basically just in words. Um, I'll just show you the table to make it easier. So this is the thresholds from 1st of July, 2020 to 30th of June, 2024. So we've got about a year left of that. Uh, and then in, from 1st of July, 2024, this is what's going to happen. So the brackets stay the same here, here, and here is where it changes. So we've got a new tax rate. It's thirty percent. That's uh, never been done before. Um, mm -hmm. but now that's going to apply between 45 to 200. The 32.5% and 37% tax bracket is going to be abolished, no, no more. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the 45% still stays, but it's an extra 20 grand that you have to, 20 grand and $1 that you have to earn to, to be in that bracket. So, which is great. So it's it's um, getting rid of the middle tax bracket. Um, so some people will get a, a, a bit of a, a kind of tax break if you're earning up to 200 grand. Um, and if you're kind of on the cusp there, you, 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 the, the, the next bracket up has been lifted as well. I just want to pause there because I think I saw a question come through unless Ben, you've been yeah, talking to Yeah, just got Twitter. It was just about a recording, which will, will be sent out after the, uh, the webinar. Awesome. Um, but, but yeah, in terms of these, these brackets, I think they're, um, I mean, it's a good thing because we, we're seeing uh, drops in tax rates here. Um, and, and I think, you know, while we might lose a, a load of middle income tax offset, we get this sort of thing, um, you know, it makes it really easy. Like it's a flat percentage. Yeah. Um, I, I'm pretty certain this does not include the Medicare levy. So, um, you know, we've got to factor in that, but at the same time, I, I definitely love the idea of paying 30% tax plus a Medicare levy instead of 37% tax plus a Medicare levy in that 120 to 180K bracket or, you know, even, you know, any, any anybody earning over 45K in their own name is going to have a, uh, the edge taken off, I reckon, mm. for uh, this one. Yeah, and that's a bulk of people in that mm. area. There's a, there's a, there's a, I can't remember the stats now, but there's a lot of Australians in that, in that middle tax bracket there. Um, and also what you notice is the 30% tax bracket is that company tax rate as well, uh, mm. at, 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 you know, which they pay 30% flat tax rate. So it is consolidating our different numbers that we have flying around to having a flat tax rate at 30%. Um, obviously anything above is 45, that's, um, you earn quite a bit of money to, to be paying that. Cool, which is exciting. No changes, no news on changing that. Uh, we've had a few people saying, "Oh, is that going to get changed now?" Nope, that's good. Um, um, the other sorry, thing, just just one one thing before we move on. Um, yep. Howard's just asked: delay payments to owners to from one July onwards. Um, that that sort of thing could be a tax planning strategy. Uh, I think I think you're on. You got the right idea there. Mm -hmm. um, just ex exactly how we sort of, you know, uh, you, you still need to manage. If you don't pay much to yourself, you still need to manage things like Division Seven A, uh, which is the loans from companies. But um, yeah, that that is one strategy that makes uh, sense. <laughs> That's right. A good one, Howard. And yeah, so so there is we, because we're not that far off. There is some strategies like that that you might want to look into. But awesome. Uh, Cool. Now, the next one is the MLS, Medicare Levy Surcharge. Now, don't confuse this with your Medicare Levy that if you, you, you everyone pays 2% if you have a Medicare 
uh, card. Uh, this is the surcharge for not having private health insurance if you earn too much money. Um, now that is going to increase. Now this is uh, new because um, it, it was it, usually what happens is this um, uh, threshold is indexed, but it was paused in 2014. So it hasn't increased since, but mm -hmm. 2024 will be the, it will be increasing again, essentially. So previously the single threshold is, uh, the base here is 90,000. So if, if you earn 90,000 or less, or you just times that uh, by two, it was 180 previously. Sorry, I don't have a comparative for this one. Um, but if it was 90,000 previously um, or 180,000 previously, you pay, you don't pay any surcharge, but if you earn more than 90 previously, that's where it starts going up. But Obviously, for 2024, that's increased to 93 to uh, and 186 as well. So not a massive jump, but it's just worth noting because um, uh, the th this is just indexation of the, the threshold itself. Yeah, indexation plays along with inflation and things like that as well. Doesn't seem so, like it's uh, reflective of the last 12 months. So who knows how they got the numbers on that? <laughs> no, your, your indexation takes a bit of time to catch up. You're right. Um, but th this is also a good reminder uh, for everyone. If you don't have private health insurance and I'm not advising anyone to get it, get a cent type or anything like that, but uh, one way to save you some tax or, or, or surcharge is to make sure you have private health insurance, appropriate hospital cover. Uh, if you're earning more than, than, than this 93 grand in the next financial year, you, even if it's next this financial year as well um but that's just a bit of an update there so with individuals uh, we're not seeing too much uh, uh changes as well there is kind of the uh call it the uh welfare side department of uh, human services side things like uh child care rebates i covered some of that in the last budget as well i'm not going to go through too much today with that one but there are some updates around there if you're not sure please go check the treasury website uh, for that one Cool. Self-managed super funds or super funds in general. There are some changes and a few people have um, <laughs> shared some uh, dismay with the changes as well um, with us, but it is what it is. We're just sharing the news, uh, but there are some uh, superannuation uh, uh, changes in terms of their tax rate. So from 1st of July, 2025, um, uh, what happens is uh, you, you will have a concession tax rate of 30% that will apply to future earnings uh, for superannuation balances above $3 million. So we've heard this in the news uh, recently, uh, but essentially uh, the, the, the idea here is that you pay an, an additional 15% if you've got more than $3 million in your accumulation account of your super. So uh, right now, if you have a super fund balance, it's paying tax on, on the income or the earnings it's making from that capital base in your super fund, it's paying 15%. If your capital base is more than $3 million, it's going to be at 30% instead. Okay. So uh, a few things to note as well. Uh, the, the proposed application includes un tax on unrealized earnings as well. So we're talking about total super fund balance. You know, your super fund balance uh, doesn't mean it's all in cash. It could be invested in you know, the share market and things like that. If the total market value or the unrealized earnings, that's what they're kind of saying here. If the total value is above $3 million, that's where you kind of go over that threshold itself. Um, and you, you, yeah, there's no reference to any, you know, if you sold it, you get a capital gains uh, tax discount on that. They're not referencing that when they look at that $3 million as well. Uh, other than that, uh, everything's pretty much the same. There's no change to how super energy tax will be calculated within the, the relevant, relevant super energy fund, which is currently 50% on earnings, 10% on capital gains for assets held in 12 months. That's just a net tax after discount. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously it's nil if it's in the retirement phase income stream. So don't, don't confuse that with the, if I have $3 million in, in, in uh, retirement phase, that's a different rule. There's a transfer balance rule that you have to look at. This is on the, the accumulation side of it. Now, um, you can have, you have a choice if you have more than $3 million, uh, you can pay the tax personally or from the super fund balance itself. Um, and, and if you have multiple super funds, you can elect which uh, uh, super fund pays that tax itself. Okay. The current, current contribution cap limits continue to apply. Nothing's changed there. Um, and, and as you know, they introduced the carry forward, unused super contributions and things like that last, uh, I think it was that two years ago. Yeah. But that's a quick update for everyone that's happening. Um, I think, now... um, sorry, Will. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, so I think this might change the um, the, the strategy for uh, uh, people who have or will have in the medium to long-term future more than $3 million in super. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, uh, you know, I guess from, from my perspective, if you're going to pay 30% on, on your earnings in an SMSF that you can't necessarily get it out of, if you haven't reached those requirements, the age and, and drawing a pension, then why would you put it in there versus let's say an investment company where you pay 30% tax outside of super, you can do what you want with it. There's no um, SMSF or super rules to, uh, to limit uh, the use of it. So, um, yeah, this is this is going to be an interesting one. Um, mm. I think some other commentary I've heard about it is there's a question mark on if that three million will be indexed. So, if we think in ten years' time, um, three million bucks might be worth a lot less than it is now. Uh, and and how does that play out? So, yeah, just a few question marks on this one um, uh, to to how long term this will actually play out. Uh, the other thing that the government has and and um, in the in the history of super, played around with limits and and how much you can do of this and how much you can do of that. Um, you know that that's the other big question mark on on what they do here. And the other thing that we really don't like is that unrealized earnings part. Like, um, you know, imagine holding an, an asset that uh, with with little or no cash, but having a tax bill as a result of holding the asset that's increased. So, um, yeah, I think that that's got to be worked through. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that the initial announcement is actually how it's going to play out and in, uh, when it actually finally goes through, um, you know, and the other thing as well is there is countries that do tax unrealized gains. Um, um, but uh, I think it's actually quite a stupid rule myself, but yeah, stick to my own opinion. All good. And and I think the the yeah the, the other the other thing is we were asking you know, where where is it at right now? Well, um, right the cons consultation process has concluded, and they're waiting for draft. We're waiting for some draft uh, legislation. Um, so it is going through. Um, it's 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 not something that's um kind of just an idea, so to speak. Um, but also uh, some misconceptions is um it doesn't mean you can't hold more than three million. That doesn't negate that you do you want to hold it or not, but uh, you can still hold more than three million. That's not a limit or anything like that. Uh, and it's based on uh, the member's total super balance uh, individually. So if you've got more than one member, it's not per super fund. Okay. Um, cool. Now, the other thing that's just worth noting, and this is not a surprise, but uh, because we're going into the next financial year, very shortly, uh, the super guarantee rate is going to increase from 10.5% to 11% from 1st of July, 2023. So in a few months, it's going to go up. Now, uh, it's earmarked to keep going up to 12%. Uh, so I think it's going to be another 0.5% next year. And then after that, it'll be another 0.5%. Uh, and it hits that 12% limit um, for what we can see right now is the foreseeable future. So you kind of pair that together with the uh, super payday um, uh, stuff that you see before. Um, there's definitely going to be an impact to the uh, bottom line, but also your cash flow together as well in terms of increased costs uh, as an employer uh, and also increase, uh, uh, I wouldn't use the word pressure, but increase uh, requirement for cash flow to run the business as well. Cool. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, there, there wasn't... Yeah, been, been and I kind of had a quick conversation before. It's like, ah, yeah, it was, it wasn't as I think we're so used to the big budget announcements back in COVID days with cash flow booze and the 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 um uh, what was that the job keeper cheese brings back some horrible memories actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um the, the there wasn't too much of a big stuff there so. Um, where 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 we see this year is there's, there's still the tax cut that's going to come. That's that's going to be uh, something we're looking forward to. Superannuation has the change of kind of goalposts or rules, you want to call it, um, and that uh, FBT they they definitely are pushing a more um, kind of energy efficient economy as well. We're using FBT for uh, giving exemptions for FBT for electric cars and also increasing um, uh, efficiency for using any heating cooling uh, appliances as well. So getting that twenty percent extra tax deduction um but that is it for today we've got about 15 minutes or so left uh in time but it, I, I just want to open up for any questions that you might have uh and if you do have something that's direct or specific that you want to chat about uh we've got that link there we'll post it again if you want to book in that call uh we can have chat to you one-on-one -on -one and see uh, how we can help as well um 
also, uh, before we jump into the Q and A side, um, if you have, uh, if you want to follow us, we've got so many different places where we are. Our resources are available for you. Uh, if you want to check us out, um, we've got all these different social pipes as well that you can follow. We've got a bunch of uh, different topics that we talked about, from tax planning to uh, uh, wealth creation to properties to SMSS. Um, so, if you want to check out uh, past webinars, workshops, or even snippets of um, uh, content that we've created, please follow us on any of those social pipes. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, switch over to Q and A and start dropping those. If if you could, let's use the Q and A. There's a few in the chat. I think there's a few. Let's just consolidate no, that. Yeah, um, none, none in the chat. Um, we've already sort of I've been, just been monitoring that. Awesome. And just a couple in q and I might actually take Howard's question. So uh, how would you, how, how often do you have to value the SMSF? So that was around the super uh, changes. Um, the answer to that is um, basically worded in a way where if the valuation of your assets change, um, uh, materially, um, that, that's my understanding of it. So, uh, and there's best practice. So for property, um, in the market we're in, I, I would suggest getting evaluation every year that used to be, um, um, once every sort of, you could probably go up to three years when the market wasn't so volatile. Um, but again, like I reckon annual valuations for, um, for property right now is, is best practice. And then if you've got listed shares, they have to be valued at 30 June every time anyway. Um, so yeah, it kind of depends on the, on the assets and, you know, if you've got gold or silver or things like that in your SMSF, there's, um, there's, you know, spot prices that you, that we use for that. Um, it's just that the property assets are a bit trickier. Um, but again, I would suggest, yeah, I mean, even month to month, sometimes the, the values change materially. So that would suggest every 30 June minimum. Uh, at the moment. Yeah. So I just want to clarify with those unrealized losses for this self-managed super, fi sorry, the super fine balance at $3 million. Yep. Um, that's not, they're not taxing the unrealized losses, uh, sorry, un un unrealized gains um, in that, in that entity. So I just want to clarify that for anyone out there. Um, that is just a reference to what the super balance will be they'll take into account those market uplifts yeah. of yeah. your of your value of your assets so kind of tied to how it's questioned how how often should i value my you know assets on my balance sheet in my self-management fund if it's sitting there at cost it'll always be less than three million dollars if you bought it you know 50 20 years ago or anything like that right but as the value goes up you need to revalue the balance sheet and that's where they're going to use that when they call the total super fund balance includes those uh, um, unrealized losses. Sorry that, if that wasn't clear, but thank you, Joe, for for bringing that. I was kind of seeing your question. I'm like, oh, I think I might have said it unclearly there. Um, awesome. yeah. Mark, interesting question. <laughs> I think I think we might avoid that one. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. like, what is this? What's, uh, what's in America? What, how, is it your first amendment right? Or what is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I will not incriminate myself but yeah we, yeah, we just don't exactly. know like it, it's just <laughs> that's just politics right like I, I, I just hold off on commenting anything about politics here but um <laughs> the the what what we do see is um uh, what we were holding on to uh, we were just kind of seeing all right there's a switch of government what's gonna happen right and from what i see so far it's not like they're going in and ripping everything apart and taking all the stuff that was already there um, uh, backwards. Some of the key items I just talked about today. So that's all that I wanted to see. And I think that's that's good for me to report to you guys to see that, hey, look, we're, we're still going ahead with the the, the boost uh, and then we're still going ahead with the tax cuts as well. There's some new stuff that they're introducing and we can see they're definitely taking a bit of a, uh, a different direction. Uh, but yeah, that's something that we're here to obviously keep you guys updated with, right? Yeah, and and from my perspective, it's way less change than I personally expected. Um, you know, Labor's um, announced some really stupid updates over their history. Um, you know, things like removing refundable franking credits and yeah. um, you know taxing trusts like companies. Th th these are things. These are not some of my favourite things. Um, and uh, yeah, we didn't see any of that, which uh, you know I, I feel cost them the election. I can't remember how many years ago when they announced the the franking credit thing. Mm. Um, yeah. So interesting. Very surprised. <laughs> yeah. That's another webinar, I guess. That's, that's the one with the, uh, that's not a webinar. It's a wine and beer session, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so how, yeah. 
we're we're getting into that the the, the planning stages. Your your the question that Howard has, uh, friend. Thank you, friend. Um, always open mind. And um, Howard's uh, question is: uh, Will some folk want to move into their retirement phase quicker? I'm not sure if anyone can see the Q and A. Ben, but I'm just going to read it anyways. So with the 3 million super issue, will some folk want to move into retirement phase quicker? Um, I think there's an incentive to do it as quick as you can now. Yeah, there there is because if if you're already meeting those, you're ticking the boxes of the, the, the retirement phase and if you convert it, there's already an incentive to save some tax on that. Um, so the sooner, the better. But the the thing that you want to manage is obviously do you have the cash flow? Because the minute you do that, there's minimum requirements to draw your retirement. It kind of comes back to the fundamental issues of whether we should retire or not. Really, um, the uh, unless you're 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 already there. Um, at, at three million dollars, what you need to be mindful of the separate rule, which is the transfer balance rule, how much you transfer uh, um, uh, as a as a as a balance into your retirement account, because anything that's above, I think it was one point seven mil, has been changed now. Um, anything above that, you get tax uh, uh, basically at a at a normal rate rather than the the nil nil tax rate. So it comes back to that really, I think. And if you it sound like you have you know, that's some specific questions further than that. If you do, I would please do get in touch. I uh, would love to workshop some some outcomes with you as well. Cool. <laughs> so I great cracker questions today. Um, that's done. And thanks, friend. Always keeping an open mind. We're, we're here to just send you some information. That's all. And uh, if you want to discuss more, uh, we can always uh, always have a frank chat together. Always up for that. Cool. cool, awesome. cool. All right. Um, we, how are we, we going with questions? Is that all we have? No worries, Howard. Appreciate you joining in. And uh, you're providing value to a lot of people as well. Thank you. Cool. cool. All right. Well, we might we might wrap up there if there's, there's no others. And um, yeah. Awesome. Um, if you guys found today valuable, quick, simple, no BS. I kind of like that style. Um, please do drop us a, a quick Google review as well. It, ha it, it doesn't take too much time, but it, it helps us immensely. Um, so if we can drop a link team uh, to the Google review, um, it just helps more people to, you know, come together community and yeah, this thing's can be confusing at times, especially in the last kind of two, three years. Um, what we find is some of these sessions just give you that little bit extra edge uh, to be able to manage your financial environment a little bit better. So if someone else can find them through Google, find us through Google and get the same opportunity as you guys did today, that will help them massively. And it will help us as well. Um, you know, make uh, more of this webinars uh, for you guys as well. So thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And I think the next one we have is the SMSF millionaire webinar. Uh, so feel free to join us. Um, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll talk all things SMSF there. Um, if you have any other further questions, specific ones, again, there's a link, book in a call with us and we'll chat to you then. Beautiful. All right. Thanks everyone for uh, joining. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Steve.